Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss how to transform the stress components from one coordinate system to another using Moore's circle. Now we're going to talk about plane stress transformation. In chapter one, it was shown that the general state of stress can be characterized by six normal and shear stress components. Sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau xy, tau xz, tau yz. However, in engineering practice, the state of stress is often represented as a single plane by a 2D element as shown here. This state of stress is referred to plane stress. As it is shown, the plane stress state assumes that the normal and shear stress components on the front and back faces are zero. As in this example, it assumes there are no stress components in the Z direction. Therefore, the state of plane stress at a point can be characterized by a combination of two normal stresses, sigma x, sigma y, and one shear stress, tau xy. In engineering practice, it is frequently required to determine the state of stresses in different planes with different orientations. Also, it is critically important to find the magnitude and direction of the maximum normal and maximum shear stresses at a point and the orientation of the element upon which they act. For example, these turbine blades are subjected to a complex pattern of stress. In order to properly design them, it is necessary to calculate the location, magnitude, and direction of maximum normal and shear stresses. We are going to introduce two methods for plane stress transformation. One, the equation method. Two, the graphical method using Moore's circle. First, we are going to look at the general equations of plane stress transformation. As we have already seen, the state of plane stress at a point can be characterized by a combination of two normal stresses, sigma x, sigma y, and one shear stress, tau xy. If we rotate this plane stress element by angle of theta, then it will be subjected to three new stress components, sigma x prime, sigma y prime, and tau x prime y prime. These three components are unique for each specific orientation theta, meaning that they will be different for each orientation of theta. The general equations of plane stress transformation are as follow. Basically, if we know the two normal stress components, sigma x, sigma y, and one shear stress, tau xy, acting on a given plane, Using these three equations, we can find the stress components that act on any other plane that has a different orientation of theta. Now we're going to learn about Moore's circle. In the late 1800s, German engineer Otto Mohr demonstrated that the general transformation equations are parametric equations of a circle. This circle is called Moore's circle. Basically using the Moore's circle, we can determine stresses acting on any other planes, minimum and maximum normal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, known as principal stresses. The orientation of the plane in which the principal stress are acting knowing as principal planes. Maximum shear stress and the orientation of the plane that is subjected to maximum shear stress. To explain the procedure for constructing the Mohr circle, let's take a look at this example. Determine the equivalent state of stress if an element is oriented 30 degrees clockwise from the element shown. Before we start, we must establish the positive sign convention for stress components, sigma x, sigma y, tau xy. As it is shown in this element, sigma x is positive because it is in the positive x direction. Sigma y is positive because it is in the positive y direction, and tau xy, is positive because it is in the positive y direction. Therefore, according to our sign convention, sigma x equals 350 megapascals, sigma y equals 230 megapascals, and tau xy equals negative 480 megapascals. The general steps to draw the Mohr circles are, one, plot a coordinate system such that the horizontal axis is the normal stress sigma with positive direction to the right, and the vertical axis represents the shear stress tau, with the positive downward direction. Two, the next step is to find the center of the circle C on the sigma axis 
with the coordinates of sigma average as the x coordinate and zero as the y coordinate. And sigma average equals sigma x plus sigma y over two equals 290 megapascals. Therefore, the coordinate of center of the circle C is 290 as the x coordinate and the zero as y coordinate. Three, plot two reference points A and G. Point A has a coordinate of sigma x, tau xy, and represents the normal and shear stress components on the element right hand vertical face. Point G has a coordinate of sigma y, negative tau xy, and represents the stress components on the element upper horizontal face. Four, connect points A, C, and G. AG represents the diameter of the Mohr circle. Either of AC or CG represents the radius R of the Mohr circle. Also, the radius of the Mohr circle can be calculated using this formula. R equals root over sigma x minus sigma y over two whole square plus tau xy whole square, which in this case, the radius of the circle is 483.73. Five, now that we have the radius of the circle, we can sketch the Mohr circle. The maximum and minimum normal stresses, sigma one and sigma two, known as principal stresses are the coordinates of point B and D. Using the circle, the maximum principal stress, sigma one, is sigma average plus R equals to 773.73 megapascals, and the minimum principal stress, sigma one, is sigma average minus R equals to negative 193.73 megapascals. These principal stresses act on planes defined by theta P1 and theta P2. These angles are represented by two theta P1 and two theta P2 on the Mohr circle and are measured from the reference line CA to CB and CD respectfully. Using trigonometry, two theta P1 equals tan inverse 480 over 350 minus 290 equals 82.87 degrees. Therefore, theta P1 equals 41.43 degrees. Now we're going to calculate the equivalent state of stress if the element is oriented in theta equals 30 degrees clockwise. The angle theta will be two theta with the same direction on the circle. Therefore, in order to calculate the equivalent stress component, sigma x prime, sigma y prime, and tau x prime, y prime, we need to rotate the line CA by 60 degrees clockwise on the Mohr's circle. Using trigonometry, sigma x prime equals 290 plus 483.73 times cos 22.87 degrees equals 736 megapascals. Sigma y prime equals 290 minus 483.73 times cos 22.87 degrees equals negative 156 megapascals. Tau x prime y prime equals negative 483.73 times sine 22.87 degrees equals negative 186 megapascals. From Mohr's circle, we managed to calculate the principal stresses sigma one and sigma two. Also, we obtained sigma P one, which is the orientation of the plane of maximum and minimum normal stresses. This plane is also called the principal plane, which is shown in this figure. Note that no shear stress acts on the principal planes. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab.